what happened. Yeah. This is like, <laughs> I saw you about to laugh, so I didn't want to lose it. Like, just... <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Nerdy Basement Podcast. We are your hosts. I am the OG Osmosis, or just simply Ozzy. And joining me once again is... What's going on, everybody? It's Eddie. It's your boy, Boozer. And we are back again with another somewhat jam-packed episode we're going to be talking to sandman we're going to give our review of this first season we're going to be talking about episode one of she hulk maybe a little more because we did get to watch at least i did everybody else not everybody got to to see it early but we got to see she hulk a little early so we'll be discussing full spoilers for the first episode and then we'll briefly be touching up on the other episodes without giving too much away um, and obviously we're going to get, we got some news and announcements. So we're going to jump right into that right away. Uh, we got more cuts from w, WB Discovery. I'm going to just say WB Discovery because Warner Brothers Discovery is a mouthful to say the least. So they're cutting back on more shows on HBO Max. So they announced a, a short list of shows that are essentially being removed from the streaming streaming platform because they're not performing as good as they they should be or as good as they want it to be and at okay. least that's what Zaslav wants or that's how he's per- perceiving the stream these shows specifically so close enough infinity train summer camp island generation the not too late show with elmo which is, it seems kind of hilarious to be to be honest with you is Aquaman, it, wait 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 time out is, is the elmo show the elmo is a little bit more adult humored based or like um i, I don't know i haven't really that? watched it I, I don't know what we were expecting on that. i'm pretty sure nobody's watching it to be i didn't honest. even know about this shit I, it doesn't come up on my feed i can tell you that much it doesn't come yeah up on I, I, I didn't max know feed. i didn't know that show was on hbo wait, max to be completely honest until what, I saw is the it news, on hbo max like, yeah it's on hbo max oh god no, i saw the news i'm just like that's on hbo max <laughs> Hilarious. And I spend a lot of time okay. on HBO Max, but I'm like, that's, that's what I'm saying. HBO Max? I'm on that like, shit way too much. Well, so for a good reason. Aquaman, Aquaman King of Atlantis, which is the animated the little three Not episode surprised. animated short, um, is getting removed from there. Uh, Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs, uh, Tig and Seek, The Fungies, Sesame Street Specials. Oh. Those are all getting, you know, the axe at the end of August from HBO Max, as obviously mm-hmm. they're not performing. Yep. um that well so a lot a lot of the reasoning behind it or at least the specific reasoning behind it is because they want to cut um they want to cut these shows because they want to save um budget and obviously they don't want to really pay out residuals to the talents that are involved with these shows so again it's a huge it's a huge so so I mean? can i can i tell everyone paying attention to this uh, like today Watch every single one of these and make sure they pay out for the fuck of it. Now I'm going to watch it just for the fuck of it. I'm going to play them all. Just Even leave, if I'm just, just walking it. around, leave it on. It, I'm just leave it on while, while we're cleaning. You know, we were talking about this the Listen. other day. We were literally talking about this the other day. Listen, what I don't get is I feel like it's like a, I, I don't know. I feel like it's a very ironic situation because on one hand, they're like, it's not doing that great. But on the other hand, they're like, okay, but we don't want to pay royalties. Well, if it's not doing that great, then you're not paying out a lot of royalties. Exactly. But if it does do good, <laughs> To where you have to pay out more royalties, it's then it's successful and it's doing good. Right. Don't right. get don't act don't act like you're paying ninety percent royalties to these people. The they, royalties they, they're you're spending to people is, I am sure, minuscule. You know what? I'll give Elmo some bucks, man. I, I'll put the fucking play, but I'm one. Yeah, like I said, like I me and Ozzy come said, on, we, we got we, we got to do, do it for Elmo cleaning. at least. For <laughs> I don't Elmo know, at least. I don't see this in the notes, but I also saw like, um, like a list of like twenty animated projects that are also being dropped. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of like specifically I see, animated I projects. List. I didn't see the list for the animated shows yeah. specifically. It was I did a come lot. across this list. Um, which, this <sighs> the is very recent. Is awesome too. Um, I heard like Infinity Train is an animation show that I haven't seen. But yeah, so I heard Infinity people Train, love it, and yeah, it's actually it's going a lot away. of people did enjoy Infinity. Yeah, Train. I heard there was a lot of hype like, behind. People that. were saying it's like the best animated project they have on there, aside from like the Harley yeah. Quinn and stuff. And mm-hmm. I mean, Close Enough also got got a, a nice little following too. Um, so I'm not too sure where. Yeah, I did. I did. Where they hear people mad about that. Uh, where they're really saying these two shows specifically, close enough in Infinity Train, really weren't performing because based mm-hmm. there was a lot of hype when they were announced. There was a lot of hype when they came out, and then post haste there was also a lot of hype, which is why you're getting the angry, you know, feedback on social media because these two shows are leaving HBO Max. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm you know not too people... sure what they're necessarily looking at. What they, what is what is David Zaslav's specific uh, requirements for these shows to, to decide? Well, this stays, that doesn't stay because you just you're just coming in with stuff that's already established. So like you know these are these are numbers that existed before mm-hmm. the merger. So it's like mm-hmm. you're just coming in like. Mm, it should have been doing better before I came in here. You you know what's funny? Uh, you know what people really love? Mm. Less options to watch. People yeah, love, love less less, uh, less, less variety, options. less options. Like no, I only like that in a menu at a restaurant. All right, you yeah, know what I mean. I'm just like, a, I don't bro, need yes, that. Yes, the only time, the only time you want to have like less options. Three pages, dude. The menu at the restaurant is three pages. Yo, bro, uh, when you go to a diner and it's like. Why is there es- <laughs> why is there escargot? And that's just on a diner? that's just the breakfast. I'm menu. like, why you would even you even get the lunch or dinner? Right? Why would you need to have like escargot <laughs> randomly on a diner menu? I'm like, where the fuck do you have snails? Yeah, why where do you, do you have, have all these ingredients? How I don't believe you. Here? I you don't know, believe you have it on this ingredient. The back in the attic. Exactly. And I'm gonna pick something. Ready? I'm gonna pick something, and you're gonna be like, we're out of stock of that. Yeah. Right. You ain't carry that in seven months. Yo, but, you know, you're yeah. going to order the escargot and they're going to be like, I'm sorry, we out of snails today, <laughs> bro. There's nothing in the back alley for you today. Dude, that is the only time oh you want less options is a menu when you're getting food. But outside of that, if I'm paying monthly for a streaming service, I mm-hmm. want to have mm-hmm. options because when I'm yeah. done in one show or one movie, I want to just I want some variety and some What's options next? to choose from. You, 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 What's don't want next? People in a, exactly. you don't want people in a show. You know what I'm saying? That's why we have all these options on these streaming services. You don't want to be in a show hole. You finish something, okay. What can I watch next? Mm. Why, for example, Netflix. Yo, we saw you like this. Um you this, might like this, this too. matches. This matches your preferences uh, about 85%. So mm-hmm. you might want to watch. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I really don't know what's going on back there, but there's more cuts that's that's going on. And I'm pretty sure this is not the end of it. This is probably just the tip of the iceberg of what they're doing. Because mm-hmm. they also like cut, like they released, I think it was like 70 more employees the other day, earlier this week from HBO Max or something like that. Uh, on top of the 70, 80, whatever they were initially doing before when we spoke about it the last time on a couple episodes ago. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. So Young Justice season five is also in question. That's bullshit. Because uh, there, there's they also don't... no plans. There's no plans right now to make a, you know, to green light a fifth season That's for ridiculous. Young Justice. So we know- The show Young... that had people revel behind it to come back. Exactly. No. And we'll exactly. do it again. I'll do it again. I- I'm okay with that. You know what? If they want to fuck with me, I will I will do it again. <laughs> we yeah, will start this Ed, Ed is showing his teeth and nail, I, I teeth and love, nail. He'll fight yeah. for it. Oh my God. I love Young Justice. Man, it was like one of the, the best revolution. things ever came, man. And one of the best <laughs> things It will not be ever. televised either. <laughs> no, no <problem. laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I, I'm not listen. Young Justice got a lot of hype behind it. You know, people support that. People like Boozer mentioned. People rallied to get the show back, um, full force, and it got picked up for HBO, HBO Max, and we got a you know a couple seasons for it. Um, but yeah, season five right now is up in there, just like season four of Harley Quinn. Even though it's looking to stand on good ground for its fourth season, but that's still also up in there. Um, not really sure what they're going to do on the animated side of things, but to jump ahead a little bit more to kind of cap off uh, the HBO Max stuff, the Constantine series is still in good standing. It's going to begin mm-hmm. filming in early 2023. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at a window of a start window somewhere between mid to late January, probably early February to get things going. But Until we get notices that they're delaying it. <laughs> Delaying it or completely canceling it because it's just not good enough. So it's going to be one of those, or they're trying to save on money. You know, they should have just sold it. everything. And they should have just sold. Like when they were talking about, I feel, they were I, get I, sold I anyway. feel like they maybe DC. Sold. That's it. Yeah, I know they want to preserve, or at least that's the that's the card they're using. They want to preserve the DC brand. They want to bring it back to what it once was. Not like it ever left. You know, its grand exactly. stature. Yeah, whatever, what you know was what I'm it? Like, it had so, a mod, it had mod podge movies from you know the Batman series to then you know Nolan and mm-hmm, random exactly. Superman movies. Like it just had a mod podge of things. It never it was never it was never a golden age of DC yeah. live action movies. <laughs> never, yeah, exactly. never for yeah, never for live action. Correct. Never for live animated. Action. It was always animated or comic, and that's like and that's how I liked it. And I think it was always great. And I'm wrong. Right. I love a lot of the live action stuff that came out, but. 
I, I just think it's just ridiculous how this big business, and I'm going to say big business because like apparently they're all just running around with their like heads cut off and they don't know what the fuck to do and they don't know like they just need to get someone that knows the what's happening right now. That's the problem. They don't want to have anyone from the outside talk. Dude, I got to give a call back to when I used to do a podcast uh, on video games. Anytime there was like a weird thing, like, like why did they do this? Like, this was such a dumb decision. Mm-hmm. We were like, it's got to be Greg from finance. They're just going to Greg <laughs> from finance and being like, listen, Greg, I know you know nothing about this, but like numbers, right? What do we do here? And Greg from finance is like, I don't know. Let's just do it or let's just cut it. And like, Absolutely. it's all Greg from finance's fault. Let's see. Yeah, but speaking of a Greg, apparently I saw a while ago they were talking about Greg Berlanti taking over as the new Kevin Feige for the DC right, stuff. Right, And I'm like, mm-hmm. I wonder if he can pull off doing like a big budget thing like that. I, so I, I honestly think I see why not. I think he could, and mm-hmm. I know we give the CW a lot of a lot of you know, you know, kickback in terms mm-hmm. of you know, and we give him a lot of slack and whatever we we bash them every chance we get because of the costumes the way they, sh- they look because how the shows messed up the season four curse that a lot of these shows mm-hmm. get hit with but the man did build up the hours from the ground up and it stood stood tall for at least a whole decade so uh, listen i mean listen, the only person i would i would any anything attached to the cw the only person i would trust is if anyone involved with like superman and lois Outside of that, yeah, like, he's still like, involved. The, listen, with it. he's still the, involved. Oh yeah, but he is. Yeah, I know. But like the listen, I have I defend the Flash and Arrow and so many other shows. That, now I haven't watched several of the last few seasons, but right. I've watched a lot of overall everything. And like, man, just so, a lot of the writing, direction, mm-hmm. cohesion, plot, villains. I just don't. I don't want any. I listen. I just don't want that translated to the movies. No, nah, I, I, I think just can't see it. If, they, if they're looking it. at someone uh, at somebody like Greg Berlanti to kind of, you know, be be the captain steering that ship on the on the feature film side of things, mm-hmm. I think with a right hand man, you know, I think he's or at least the thing is like with a bigger bigger budget, you can hire better writers. Obviously, yeah, you know, yeah, with I the guess, CW, yeah. you know, he has a limited amount of money. I guess the obviously, tough thing granted, is like we don't know because like TV shows are so different. And they're right. they're way different than than movies and, and how they're produced and like you know, um, so we we can only imagine like who was in charge of like overall cohesiveness not only between seasons but also between the shows. So like exactly we like, like yeah, yes, granted, he's he up the there, but like producing the show, but, like who knows like how much control company. he had, how much influence he gave, mm-hmm. how much exactly. end decisions on the on the char- on the plots and you know vil- main villains and oh who's going to be the big bad of this season? How are we going to connect things to this other show? Who knows really to what extent anyone really had other than like what we can kind of assume? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I th- I think either way, I think if if that's who they decide to go with. I think there's an opportunity to kind of get what we, you know, some sort of cohesive universe. And I wouldn't say it would rival Marvel right away. And it doesn't really need to. And I know I mentioned that in, in the last episode um, where, you know, if DCWB actually spent the, the past decade cohesively building a universe, they could have had something as massive. But I mean, I don't really need, I don't really feel like it needs to be that massive. I mean, they can take their time and kind of do their own thing and kind of build their own universe. But if they decide to go with Berlanti, I think it is a solid choice given his track record, production wise, at least when it comes to the CW. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I have a, yeah, I have a, I have a theory that I will you talk have, about later, later, you have a theory uh, about, about later? How, how to build a new universe for the DC. Gonna, but I'll do that. Are you going to start it with the dreaming? Nah, well, <laughs> You can, but no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't going to, but continue. But, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, let's get it, back into it. <laughs> keeping it on the CW, um, Jordan Elsass has exited season three of Superman and Lois mm. um, due to personal reasons. Most is being hinted at that it has to do with his mental health, which obviously everyone should take care of their mental health. So he is exiting the show and they will be recasting the role. So that sucks. Uh, he's good. I like him. I, I, I yeah, always just got every, mad that he didn't have powers. <laughs> yeah, everybody's upset about it. You know, it's understandable. The dude mm-hmm. was killing it on uh, Superman and Lois. And mm-hmm. Listen, three seasons in, the show is probably one of the, the best shows on the CW right now. So yep. it's, it's, it's a hurtful exit, you know, yep. but 
you know, mental health is important. So he felt, he felt like he needed to focus on that more than the show, then by all means, do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so moving on, we got, a, we got an update on the reverse <clears throat> flash himself, Ezra Miller, who um, issued a public apology on social media. Was that option two? <laughs> that was option that was, one. That was that option, was option one. one, actually. Yeah, that was option number one. And that wasn't, they, they wanted to go the interview about, uh, by they, I mean WB wanted to go the interview route where, you know, he talked about his erratic behavior. Well, they talked about their erratic behavior and the issues that they had going on with their mental well-being and all that good stuff. Um, But that didn't really happen. So they came out and issued a public apology and a public statement saying that they will be seeking mental health help for mental complexity issues that they are dealing with at the moment. So I, I love I, I'm sorry I'm gonna have to bring this up like you know hey they, they're talented people and all that kind of stuff but I, I I really just can't stand the whole I'm like hey you know what I'm gonna apologize and things will be better and all that kind of stuff like, yeah I we, got, menta- we, I'm we, like, we gotta cut that bullshit we gotta cut that shit that mentality is it. so wrong I'm like why do they get such an easy pass I guess in the sense like money we, we, we know why we know money. Why. oh yeah we, we know I, why. I, exactly the, and the, it just the, sucks the writing's, you know on, the writing's on the wall we know yeah. why Dude. Look at look at every giant like just to put this in in more of our space. Look at every giant content creator YouTuber that's done some horrible, stupid, crazy shit mm-hmm. and literally mm-hmm. lost nothing. Like nothing. lost a, maybe two hundred thousand subscribers. Maybe then eventually then eventually gained back a million more tenfold. And, and now their their wallets are probably like you know five x at this point so and what everyone's I'm hearing, forgotten about what they did so what Money. i'm hearing boozer is we need to do some really fucked up shit soon so we can get a million after we apologize right nah that, see, we already need saying? to have we already need to have an obsessive uh, yeah, see, it's, it's we, the people we, that already gotta, have the we, obsessive we gotta have fan base like you gotta have a cult like following mostly mm-hmm. children which i don't mostly, ever mostly want <laughs> but that's that's we're, we're literally e for explicit we don't do yeah, that yeah i mean that's, yeah, that's yeah, the no, problem we, don't, we, don't we that might that talk here. about kid stuff get yourself get yourself a kid fan base and rick and morty Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Hulk on the yep. I'm like, no, we're not talking about kid shit. Though. It's just, <laughs> it, it's just, not it's a shame. All. It's the way it is. You know, people get these, Damn. you know, very young fan bases that idealize them on it and forgive them for literally anything. For it's any, fresh. and 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 celebrity status is 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 the same thing. Whether you're a, a traditional it's movie it, it's movie celebrity thing. or you're a big YouTuber, people will just forgive anything. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah. It's, it's, it, it's tough mean, in the in the art space because like if we all stopped if we all didn't watch a movie or listen to a song based off of anyone that did something bad we there's a lot of content we would not be watching or yeah, or listening exactly. to or Fair so enough. sometimes you do have to kind of separate the the kind of content from the stuff there's limits though i will say it's a very nuanced situation mm-hmm. but yeah right. no it's for the most part people will, will literally forget everything Unless like something goes to court and like he's convict they're they're convicted of something wild. Yeah, once, everything's once probably get, gonna be forgotten. Legal papers and yeah, like right now, like every everything's all allegations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone's well, gonna forget about allegations forever. I don't think so because they already forgave uh, Johnny Depp now. So I don't. All right, we got two. Yeah. We got two people yeah. in this. Yeah. Let's, Wait, let's they they forgave Johnny Depp. Is, yeah, I mean, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, moving on from that. But yeah, they're they're seeking out mental health um, help. Um, uh, best wishes to them. That's all I can really say. Um, I'll keep it. I'll keep it as as clean as that. <laughs> but moving on from that, we did get our first trailer for Wednesday, which is the the Adams Family show focusing obviously on Wednesday Adams. Um, we also got information that, that Tim Burton has directed 50% of the show. So four out of the eight episodes has been directed by Tim Burton. And obviously we didn't get no casting information th- this past week. You know, we got the trailer, we got some new stills, we got new plot details on the show. Obviously the information that Tim Burton directed four episodes, not a casting reveal for Uncle Fester, which they're, they're you know, keeping secret. They want people to wait until the, they watch the show to see who they cast as Uncle Fester. 
I don't really know. I don't have any actors that really come into mind to really pull off a Uncle Fester, but if well, they're no, holding it. Danny comparing. DeVito. It's gonna be Danny DeVito. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> Danny DeVito, but I was trying to go somewhere else. I would I would still love to see him try it though. Like, he's he's just fun. He's a fun Danny actor DeVito. to see. Uh, that would be fun. Yo, it was Danny DeVito. Nah. I want a re- I want a reward. Even better, <laughs> even better, even better. Michael Keaton. He's gonna come in right in there. Michael, <laughs> just, imagine, yo, imagine he's in. Michael Keaton. <laughs> yo, imagine. He, oh my Michael god, Michael he Larry. can, dude. Think about it. He could pull a Beetlejuice <laughs> moment with just his bald right, head right, coming right. in as Uncle Fester, fucking yo, like putting a light bulb in his mouth. And like, fuck it, I'm I'm for it. Fuck it, let's do it. Bro, like that, him Keaton. or Danny DeVito, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Michael Keaton or Danny DeVito, that's who's playing Uncle Fester. <laughs> any 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 takers? Let us know. I'm fine any takers? Let us know who you believe is Uncle Fester and. Oh, in the God. Wednesday show, but <laughs> either way, I'm excited. I'm excited to see the show, honestly. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna see what, what they fun. bring to the table this time around with the Adams family. You know, that's been that's been a huge uh, staple, or at least a stamp in, in pop culture history. Uh-huh. These at the Adams family. So I'm yeah. excited to see what Netflix does with that. We also got information that Rogue One, Star Wars, a Star Wars story, will get a re-release on IMAX next Friday. Hmm. Um, and that will include exclusive footage for the Andor show. And you can only see that footage hmm. when you go watch Rogue One in theaters, which I am tempted to do because I never saw Rogue One in theaters. Oh, I did. I watched it, it at nice. home. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah, I did. And I, but I never watched it in theaters. So I'm tempted to go watch Rogue One in theaters because Rogue One was an absolute fucking blast. Yeah, dude. It's like when you see it on that big screen, the scope of it, it just it is beautiful. It's like it like it. So again, like one of my, I've, I've told plenty of people, I'm like, it's my favorite Star Wars movie ever. Like, and that's even comparing it to the original trilogy. I think this is that Rogue One was the pinnacle of what Star Wars universe is. You know what I mean? Like as a live action, I'm like, it was perfect. And then again, it was perfect because they didn't survive. And that's the right. reason why I'm like, they showed the reason why they never were in any other movies or ever besides, Hey, it was because these guys made the biggest sacrifice. We were able to stop the death star and they kept their word. Like now yeah, giving this guy right. a prequel, all good. He was a great actor. I loved him in the movie and all that, but I'm like, I, I was fine with just the movie. I was, I was happy with yeah. that. So just to say it. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, August 26, you can watch world one in, in IMAX again and get some exclusive footage for Andor before it releases um, in September now, because it did get pushed back. Um, we got to mm. get a three episode premiere in September. I forget the date, but it, it'll be in September. Um, hopefully we can screen this for that because I'm excited about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, moving on to our last bit of, of news for this week's episode, we got Zoe to Rakes, who has joined the cast of Ironheart. So that's currently filming. Obviously, we got some set photos of that. We got to see mm-hmm. the hood. We got to see Riri Williams in her costume. Uh, well, not necessarily her Iron Heart suit, at least her Mark One version of it, which should be coming out of easily transitioning from Wakanda Forever, unless mm-hmm. she gets a new costume upgrade. Unless the show takes place before Wakanda Forever, and then she comes out of Wakanda Forever with a new costume. Because I does think it's going to be vice one. versa, because her introduction would be Wakanda Forever. So They're for her to have a her show, introduction, but you don't think she comes out of Wakanda Forever with a new costume when she's already building her Mark One? I want to say I bet you they at least give her the first episode or two to get it with the Mark One in her series, and then she finishes off with the new suit because so you know she has that's to earn it. so she has yeah to earn it. it's that, she has to earn exactly it. Uh, they have to uh, earn their suit. Isn't she it? has so, to earn it. God, damn. I mean, I think that's what it is. In all fairness, in all fairness, her not coming up with the perfect suit the first time i think is fair you know being that it's I can not that. everyone can be tony stark yeah and we saw right. from the iron man movies how difficult it is to create an iron man suit it's so out of a box of scraps yeah i i feel mm. i feel it's it's especially how with how young Ruby williams is i don't know yeah how young is she in i know in the comics but she's like, like 16 17 still like i think they're okay. keeping the age gap like, yeah the same thing so, so like i can I, can I, don't, I don't think she's gonna be that young i don't think she's gonna be that young but, in, in the yeah, show she might get an age yeah. bump just like but um, either movie. way she's still pretty young and i can i, I can forgive her having to tweak suits a little bit mm-hmm. i can forgive yeah. that as long as they that don't works mess bit. around and do the kind of the same shit that they've done with like 
you know, them sending Sam his brand new Captain America suit, you know what I mean? Instead of him doing his own thing, yeah. and shit, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I, I just hope, this. exactly, right? Like, you're hey, look in the mail thing. for this. Like, we're, we're hooking you up by bringing it, it's like and he, so It's on. like he ordered like, it from Avengers you know? headquarters. I want to put in a request <laughs> yep. for a new personalized suit. I'm going mm-hmm. as Captain America that, now, but I need my that's Falcon all integrated in it. Yeah, but it, so, yeah. we'll see. Hopefully it's not we'll that see. case, but. That's my whole thing. But yeah, she's earning it. She's earning the, the she, new suit. Yeah, I can see. I can see her earning it. But yeah, moving on from that, we're going to dive into She-Hulk episode one. So spoilers ahead for anyone who has not watched the show. Obviously, go watch it. Come back. If you don't mind spoilers, stick with us. But we'll be diving into spoilers for the entirety of episode one. We'll withhold our spoiler thoughts or spoiler plot points for episode two, three, and four, because obviously we're ways away from that and we cannot break embargo on those episodes. We can get in big trouble. Marvel is sniping us. So anyway, who uh, wants to go first on, on, on She-Hulk? Because I, I rewatched it. I found that it was better better the second time around than the oh. first watch, but I want to hear you guys' thoughts first. I just watched it before we got onto this for while I was eating dinner. Uh, <laughs> and I enjoyed it. Like... Like me, you know, if I, my fiance were watching, like we were having a good time watching it. Like I, I really wasn't like annoyed at anything. And uh, to me, like I was kind of expecting, like you know, with all the hype of the internet, that the CG would be complete garbage. It was fine for me. I'm not very picky. I didn't have any issues with it. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. obviously, gotcha. things could always be better, but like nowhere was I watching it and it was like, oh, that's that's rough to see. I never had a problem with that. But it's just maybe it's my eyes. But I, I had no problem with it, you know. Like I said, things can always be better. But I thought it was fine. Um, I think uh, I really enjoyed, um, you know, She Hulk and the actress uh, playing. I thought the, the personality and like, and I, I just really vibed with the character. Um, you know, just like uh, Kamala, you know, in Miss Marvel, I think they're just really likable characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, like, I, someone mentioned it, and I completely agree. As much as people thought, like, you know, they, people hate on Smart Hulk, I feel like Hulk in this has been 10 times more interesting than the last little bits of Hulk we've gotten. Mm-hmm. It was like he's very much in denial of, like, the stuff he's been through, right. you know, throughout, the, you know, the time as a hero and as the Hulk. I feel like he's dealing with trauma that he really doesn't realize. And no, he, I feel he's, like we kind of suppressing that trauma. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we hear it within like the, you know, him talking about like building the, you know, the tiki bar with Tony and you mm-hmm. know, Tony just kind of sat there. But like he was like remembering it so fondly and like he misses his friend. Like mm-hmm. they've dealt with crazy tragedy. Like all of them have ridiculous mm-hmm. trauma in, mm-hmm. in, in general. Mm-hmm. But like, I mean, he's got it a little bit worse because like he's literally dealing with like a, a second persona essentially so like mm-hmm. he's he's always in a battle with mental health so but i feel right. like he doesn't truly understand that or, or or come to terms with it so i like what we're seeing from the hulk so far obviously he's you know we, we just got that first episode of him and i don't believe we're going to see much of him throughout the rest of the show um i, I if i'm not mistaken but either I way i do. like he's, what we got he's to sprinkled see. he's sprinkled, sprinkled around um he's definitely he definitely has a scene in the next episode okay that's that's yeah. all i'll say i'm not going to give any mm-hmm. context because obviously yeah. that'll be spoiler territory but he does have a scene in the yeah. next episode but i i i liked what we saw of him and like how he has like his lab and you know he was really worried for her i don't know i just mm-hmm. i enjoyed and i also enjoyed their chemistry um as well you know they're they kind of seemed like siblings for the most part mm-hmm. um but yeah i i enjoyed the show um, I'm excited to see what we get next. I like yeah. it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to say I like it a lot yet. I I definitely wish that um, I I jumped on to see the first four episodes because I think maybe I would have liked it a lot if I saw all four already. But mm-hmm. uh, besides that, and me crying about that, um, the CG <laughs> like exactly right. I'm like I should I should have just listened to Ozzy. Hey, we have this we have the screeners. I should have just hopped on I don't right know away. I right that. away. I should have listened. But besides that, <laughs> um, CG wise. Uh, better than what we saw in the trailers obviously and all that kind of stuff i will say like this because i like boozer you also probably know this with the touch of the like you know with a graphic design background and Mm. all that kind of stuff yeah hair is still one of those things that is almost impossible to replicate in a a believable fashion when it comes to vfx art you know completely like cgi it's one of the hardest things doing it in water doing it in regular things unless everybody is cg hair is tough 
This is yeah, why absolutely. like in, in scenes, when the scenes, like she was doing yoga and she had her hair tied back and all that. That's what I think those were the best shots in her in daytime. Right. But mm -hmm. when she has her hair flowing and all that kind of stuff in the brighter lighting with the, like all the, you know, the daytime, mm -hmm. like filters, that's when it, it's hard to stomach a little bit of the CG with her face going through as well, because it's not her natural hair. It's just her face, like in, mm -hmm. in the middle of a whole bunch of CG hair. That's always, I, I, I give them credit for doing as good a job because obviously I know. Yeah, I can't. No, you're right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's where the CG is always a little iffy. I'm not going to lie about that, but Hulk looks better than he has in a long time. And there's as well, but again, they've had plenty of practice with Hulk. Um, right. I, I definitely can say, yes, this Hulk has given me a little bit more of a, you know, uh, liking to him, but I, I still hate what they've done with this Hulk in the MCU. I, he is not, I'm not a fan of how they portrayed him at the lead at all in these last, uh, like how many movies that he's been in. Um, but everything else, I think they're, they're capturing little bits of who the she Hulk is and how she is in the comics, bringing from the fourth wall and, you know, um, you know, the, the quirky attitude and her just having being, you know, fast, funny and everything like that quick witted, you know, and I think that's pretty solid. You know what I mean? I have really nothing to say bad too bad about this episode besides saying, okay, fine. But right. again, I, I, you know, you have it marked down in our notes and everything. I think the highlight of the whole episode were the Captain America jokes. Um, oh, for sure. And, and that after credit scene, I because that after credit scene had me that was good dying. Like so, I was just like, I think that, like, I think it's, I even it's told, probably it's up there with one of it's the, the best, best ones thing. in the MCU. It is. For, I think in a long time, in a long is time, is the best over uh, overall best one ever. And I'm just like, I started and, dying. And, dying. And she's just so like again, she's just like a very likable character. She is. Like I just think she's yeah, a very likable character. Very chill. It's a, again, this yeah. is honestly geared toward a more adult audience now. Oh and yeah, you can for tell sure. right off Hands the bat, down, it's a tell. lawyer show, as you kept on saying. It's and you could the tone is there because guess what? Like any little kids watching that, and even with it cut off, Captain America. Like yo, come yeah. on! Like you know, they these know kids they are said. smart. These kids you know are what smart. They They're not stupid. <laughs> these kids are smart. And if they you have exactly. subtitles on, you see the first two letters, <laughs> so exactly. it doesn't matter. Our exactly. brains can fill in the blanks. Exactly. Definitely. But anyway. I remember, I remember first seeing that that post credit scene where you know where Bruce reveals that Captain America does indeed fuck, um, <laughs> <laughs> and and I see it, and I'm just like, no way they just pull some shit off like this. Dude. on a disney plus show on top of that you know what i'm saying so i was like wow. i gotta give props for them to it, it, granted it's not super explicit but just the fact that they added that in the she hawk show yeah. confirming that cap just the rumor yo captain america died a virgin because this guy was just battle at, as she mentions he's at the world breaking event after world breaking event this guy has no time to go get some ass but <laughs> He found some time to go get some and ass. Remember, oh, she yeah, brought he had to that America's hammer. ass. America, that America's time. ass. Bro, the passion, when she the passion behind the yeah. ass, I felt it deep in my yeah. soul. Like it's like it's like girl, you're right. Going. Girl, Have you going. right. You absolutely right. That um, ass did not deserve to die a virgin. It did not <laughs> deserve to die a virgin. You absolutely right. <laughs> um, real quick, Ozzy, before you go into yours, I, I just want to mention with with I agree with Ed. Like, I definitely agree that like um like hair, like completely mm -hmm. what you said is, is right like hair is one of the hardest things to get right when it comes to like trying to cg hair mm -hmm. it just ends up looking off and, and that's understood and that's why like like for me and especially like her face is one of the most human faces for like mm -hmm. cg like yes you have hulk he has a lot of texture he has his facial hair he has right. more um rough skin uh yeah. than than say you know the female does you know female mm -hmm. she hulk uh and then also you have like say people will say like oh what about thanos he has that giant chin, purple skin. He's literally our, supposed to be out of this world. Yeah. Like, so, like, <laughs> our when it comes to like our brains, mm -hmm. if it's a little more foreign or something like that, we'll, we'll, we won't notice, you know, CG as much yeah. when it's literally supposed to be human, like a replicate replication of a human face. Oh, our okay. eyes, even with fantastic CG, our eyes are going to be like this feels yeah. the uncanny valley is like an inescapable. Like yeah. it's it's so hard to get past that. Um, oh, but in, in general, like. Yes, they could do better with, with certain things. And I think they definitely are way better than what the trailer's game. Oh, yeah. But for me, like, I am trying to go into this with, like, as long as it's not horrible, I'm going to let my brain not really care too much about it. You know what yeah. I mean? Knowing all the things that I know about 
you know, mm-hmm. with CG and, and what, what yeah. they budget they had. And we know all these people are overworked like crazy and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, so totally. yeah, exactly. my brain's I like, mean, listen, there, there as is, long as it's not hot garbage, there is I'm really just about, not going to, you know. There is talks about Marvel Studios opening their own VFX mm-hmm. company now because of mm-hmm. all the projects they got coming on and, you know, all the stuff that all the backlash they've been facing with overworking VFX artists and mm-hmm. you know, so they're just going on to top hide. of that. So they're just going to overwork them anyway Again, and they're in-house ones. Well, I guess like, one one thing that oh I don't God. um I, I haven't read uh I don't know I, I'm not, I'm not speaking from like I know any information on this, but are is it that because like they're paying VFX companies, yeah. right? Yeah, multiple. are they being overworked for the most part by Marvel having deadlines and then that company being like y'all got to meet these that de- we got to meet these deadlines? Or like, According to I, these, I'm sure it's pressure from Marvel wanting the deadline. Obviously, you know. But I think it's more. I, I don't really know based yeah. on what these video video effects artists are saying. Is they're pointing all the fingers at Marvel specifically. Yeah. They're not talking about their in house mm-hmm. higher ups. It's like Marvel has deadlines. Mm-hmm. They add extra pressure when we're not meeting those deadlines, or they change those deadlines, mm-hmm. and then once mm-hmm. those deadlines are met they come back with the same project and they want some reworks to add a more stringent uh, deadline to it. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, we're working 60, 70 hours a week trying to meet these deadlines. And it's just too much, too much stuff going on and we can't meet these deadlines. I will say if they do their own in-house studio, it uh it could allow for a little bit easier control and communication and also would put more eyes on them. Like if you continue to overwork them, like, you don't have anyone to blame. Like you can't say like, oh yeah, we have some deadlines, but the company could have just told us like we can't make this deadline, mm-hmm. and we would have been like, okay, well, we'll maybe we'll 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 delay, and you guys can get mm-hmm. things done. They won't right. have any of that excuse that they can pull. Yeah, because See, if it's then... in house, it's literally just like, oh, it's you know we could delay it, but we chose not to and made them work through it. Yeah, say like it was you if you work for a big business as well as I have and everything like that, or an agency company, when they have an in-house place, they make this they use the same excuses to the people that are their full timers. Like, well, you signed on for this, it's not just a 40 hour week, it's for the projects and this and that. Yeah. So, like when it's it, in big business, it's a little bit easier for them to say, you know what, here's your pizza party for all your th- all th- the things pizza for party every, all everything. The 80 Always. hours of work. And guess what? I'm they, pretty they, sure they, they won't pay like overtime. Bro. you know yeah oh yeah it's it ridiculous like chuck e. cheese it's it's the saddest thing in the world i've done it myself i fell into that same fucking shit with like 65 to 70 hour weeks for what like i'm like we're not saving lives here i'm like you know we yeah, can't yeah. tell hey. the client back up but listen i went to i went to work three days out of a vacation uh seven day vacation i had yeah. it was a staycation and <laughs> literally the the bro. thing that needed to get done no one like literally no one was trained in except for me and they were like, we need to get it done. And I was like, you know what? I could use the extra money. I'm going to keep my vacation time and I'll come into work and I get I get three extra days paid that week. All right. I was like, listen, so I was like, ah, listen, I need the money right it's now. Tough. Was, it's, it's tough. Yeah, so like, it's tough but like, I'll never do it again. That I was like, that was like maybe like four years into working there. Now I'm yeah. 12 deep. I'm never doing something like that. Oh, mm-hmm. now 12 deep. So like in between after that four year, you're saying nothing <laughs> happened since then. Sure, not, not really. <laughs> see, there see, was that, see that was that. A, that was a time when I really wanted to try to get promoted and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and like you try to do those extra things to show that you're a team player. Yeah. And right. no one that, ends up caring. So, oh that. yeah, I would say like after like year five, I pretty much gave up trying any any of like that. You know, oh, I'm a team player. I'm willing mm-hmm. to go above and beyond because at the end of the day, they don't care. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I did the same thing when I went to Virginia recently. Granted, there was an agreement that I would work, you know, partial, you know, a couple hours a day. But I ended up having to dedicate at least two, three days almost of work on that vacation because my coworker decided to quit work the, the day huh. the day I left for my vacation. So I'm just like, damn, that just threw a whole wedge into the vacation, even though I agreed to work some hours. Now I gotta work more hours. You didn't agree to do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I didn't agree to all that. That wasn't the agreement. Because I was supposed to have backup. You know what I mean? There was supposed to be somebody there. But I mean, it is what it is. It happens. Next time I'll just, you know, I'll just bite the bullet and just take you know, I'll just take my week off and, and mm-hmm. just go. Even that's not biting a bullet. No, no, no. That's not a biting a bullet. That's taking what when you, you got are supposed when to be I doing. got bills to pay. Yeah. What's the nerdy basement pay? You're still getting paid. You know? You're still getting no, 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 <laughs> no. no, no. This, 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 this wasn't this, this wasn't a, this wasn't an actual vacation. This is days that I 
Oh, okay. So you were actually, okay. This was an actual PTO. Okay. Okay. So pay time off. So, all right. No, okay. Fine enough. But guess what? Like Jennifer Walters, she's a fucking lawyer and she makes way more money than us, even not being a superhero. So (laughs) it is. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really have, there's only, there's only so much I can personally add to what you guys have already said to Mm -hmm. about She-Hulk because we can't really talk about the other episodes yet. Well, you um, can't I, anyway. I, I, yeah, I, can't. <laughs> I mean, either sorry, salty. Can. I'm so salty. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can. Watch. Nobody can. Even if you see it, you can't talk about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed the episode. I mean, I enjoyed it even a little more the second time I watched. I watched it before we we got on. Um, just like booze, I was eating dinner, and I was like, you know what? Let me just rewatch the episode. I've seen it already, but let me just rewatch it now without the big watermark in the middle of the fucking screen mm. blocking half the half the lip movement from Jennifer Walters when she's talking. You know, because she's so short. Also, come on, Disney. <laughs> Listen, one thing I love about on, one thing I love about anime screeners is like at least they put it like it's big, but like at least it's mm. like in the corner. Yeah, like right. Or, or sometimes you don't even get it at all when you get it like an anime. Screen. Yes, you don't get it yeah, some at of all. them. Yeah, which it's like. It's track. or like or like the, the the netflix one is right at the top of the edge of the screen mm-hmm. i ain't got worried about it. like you mean but to tell no, me disney yo you, disney and marvel yo you, that smack center of the screen is like bro move that shit i'm trying you to, mean enjoy to tell the show. me and they don't even you mean to tell me that they can't have like an embedded image into there that like they can look over with a specific like oh computer my god they, program? they have mean, that that they technology has that. to exist that's isn't that how like a lot of the content id and stuff like that works mm-hmm. Crazy. Just do that, like. Yeah, I mean, they, they can do. If that. someone they, leaks they a clip, being, they look at the clip. They just see what the embedded. Listen, we receive screeners where they can track your IP address easily. And it's, the, they, it's, it's the embedded into the screen. Watermark. Yeah, they don't <laughs> remind the screener. They, I remember. I mean, we not the screener. Like, remove su- the watermark. Yeah. Remember, yeah. we we've had issues with trying to see screeners around the same time that it'll bounce us out before. Like they mm-hmm. won't even let you log into multiple like at multiple times, mm-hmm. even though you have the access. I'm like, why? Just because I'm in North Carolina, Ozzy's in New Jersey, shouldn't mean that you know we can't watch it at the same time. I'm like, right. what the fuck? Like, Dude, you know what's ridiculous. also horrible? I um one time I was trying to access a screener, and it was uh it it, it wouldn't start, and I just refreshed the screen, and it counted as a, as a whole view. That I've I've seen that. I was like, "What? Come on!" (laughs) Yeah, there's a whole goddamn view, and I just refresh the screen. They be trifling. They be trifling. But yeah, going back to to She Hulk. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's not much I can really add. I enjoyed the episode. I feel like her origins were a little too glossed over. Granted, I, mm. I know what they were going for, and yeah. like I said in the in the group chat earlier today, they're they're not really. Marvel's not really focusing on the typical origin stories that we've gotten before, where you're spending two hours with this character learning about their origins to then get thrusted into the story that they really want to tell with Jennifer Walters, this episode, you got, you got her origin here. Mm-hmm. We're thrusted back into the lower show because that's the show and the story we want to tell. And granted, it was fun to hear her banter back and forth with Bruce, or with, uh, you know, Bruce Banner with, you know, the Hulk and whatever, and, you know, learn, learning about their personal family dynamic because we never seen them in the Wrath in the MCU before, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. So, you know, learning, seeing how Hulk, you know, has become a little more interesting now that he's dealing with a lot of that trauma, like Boozer said, and see him suppress those emotions and, and not want to, to face them because he's already dealt with enough and having to fight his inner demon, which is essentially the Hulk, um, mm-hmm. and not wanting to deal with all of that other personal stuff. But obviously, the comedic timing is there. The chemistry is there. The VFX, obviously, some parts look great, some parts don't. Mm-hmm. There's a scene in episode two where it looks... Oof, it is so tough. It is so hard to look mm. at. But I mean, it is what it is. That's the mm. final product. What can you do? You just got to accept it for what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I and mean, I, I will add one more thing too, because you, you, you did bring up a good point or like that with the, uh, the origins and all that kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure all they're doing is making sure that it still links up to like secret invasion and all that kind of stuff, because like, Probably. It, mm-hmm. it's, you know, comic wise, it was because she was, you know, working a case. You know what I mean? And then they try to assassinate her and she was almost killed. 
Bruce was there for the for this specific case right. and he had to give her an infusion to save her. He was like, okay, I know this might fuck you up, but I'm gonna do this anyway. And that mm-hmm. is so it was it was the added layer. She was already working cases for superhuman stuff. And, and I would have preferred and I would have preferred that you aspect know? of the origin story. Granted, mm-hmm. we got the car accident part, mm-hmm. but you know, the car is attacked and whatever, but you know, she gets into some car accident because some random Sakar sh- ship just plops down in the middle of the road. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could have done a little better than that, Um, especially when we start when we start the episode. We are already in the middle of her prepping for the closing statements of Mm -hmm. the case that she's already tackling. So, I mean, you know, you could you could have interwoven that into that actual case and given us a little more of the source material. But granted, it is what it is. I I would say the only thing is like if she's like already working like. It's tough because I feel like that would that would involve like several episodes of us already establishing her being a lawyer, already establishing her working cases, and then eventually, th- and then we're finally getting to her powers, like maybe several episodes in out of nine episode season. Yeah. I, I don't know. It I mean, would be a little know. tough, like management, because like we would really just be, we would have to introduce her already working cases mm-hmm. up, and, and then we'd just be getting her powers maybe within two episodes max, three episodes, mm-hmm. I think, to really. And then, and then, and then now she finally has her powers. Then she has to navigate, you know, them for mm-hmm. maybe an episode or two. Mm-hmm. I feel like it, whatever, whatever plot there would be for a narrative, like, you know, whatever the, the conflict is, I feel like that would take a back burner aside from like secret invasion or something like that. But I don't think they want to incorporate that really to the. I well, I can at least like attest to the fact that I'm like, you know what? I'm if she didn't have her powers right away, I think I would have felt some type like I would have been bored. Because of, yeah, that's what I mean. I feel like it would have been a little. I feel like it would have been a little boring. Yeah, because like think about it. The whole the funnest part about being a hawk is that anything can trigger you. Yeah. So now it like so she gets triggered in court, but it's only be and she yeah. she's able to control it way better than what Banner has, and mm-hmm. they were making that very obvious, which is kind of fucked up. Because honestly, I'm like I get it. All right, you're giving woman power and all that fun stuff. She's way better than Banner. Okay. Thank you, but I'm like you didn't have to rub it in his face so much. I'm like I, no, I don't I, like this banner either. But... Personally, I love that he I love that he was just like he's you like know? okay, this is like uncharted territory, and he's just like ripping out pages. You know what I mean? I just, yeah, it's, I just... Like, it's just but funny. I'm also like listen. In all in all fairness, in all fairness, he he definitely showed off his strength way more than than her. You know, he like definitely, it yeah. was lovely. I thought, like I said, I enjoyed their chemistry because it felt like mm-hmm. a brother sister chemistry. Like they're both yeah. trying to one up each other. Yeah. My man's just throwing a, a freaking boulder out of our atmosphere, like a literal comet and shit. Hey, <laughs> he still shows it. He's like, hey, I, I, I'm not happy that you're. This is so easy for you. Like, and I get, yeah, it, he was. It's, and it's and again, and that's, that's more to his trauma. About. He was no, frustrated. Yeah. He's like, why do you get the easy shit? Mm-hmm. Why yeah, did exactly. I have to? Why did I have to go through a 15 year long journey? Also, one of the biggest thing is if you didn't catch it, or at least I, call, I, I, that's how I interpreted it. I think he was happy to know that there was someone else that was going to go through the same shit he did. Yeah. So he yeah, wasn't he as wanted, lonely anymore. Yeah, he, he needed companionship. Yeah, yeah, he, he needed someone. Absolutely. Yeah, he wanted to. You be know, like, yeah. and I think I th- because you know it hurt him. It hurt exactly, and then you know her like literally twisting the dagger in his gut, like saying, "This is why you don't have any relationships now. You don't. You're not having it." Blah blah blah. Tony was the one of the few people that he still had. Obviously, the bar scene. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those things. But yeah, that's it. That's all I gotta say. But like, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Captain America was the the best scenes. So oh yeah, the, that that the that that was the highlight. There, there's also there's I think there's a there's not that I think, but there's a scene in the next episode that I think a lot of people are going to be talking about. That's going to point to something. And if you guys, mm. if anyone has been watching uh, any of the interviews from the from the launch event this past week for She Hulk, I think there's some stuff in there that kind of points into what the next episode hints, hints at. Mm. Okay. But obviously, I can't spoil anything because Marvel's over there. Like... Feige. <laughs> Feige's only a sniper. Dude, shit. dude. Yo, yo, look behind you. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Screen's black. <laughs> it's like, oh. it's gonna Do we just keep rolling? Just see Kingpin right behind <laughs> But yeah, I mean, oh, like I said, God. overall, it's a, it's a solid introduction to to She-Hulk. And, uh, you know, despite the little gripes and whatnot, I think it's super solid. The story they're trying to tell, I think, is enjoyable. It's fun. The, the mm-hmm. cast is great. The, the, the supporting cast has so far has also been great. I'm only based I'm only going off episode one just 
to be specific. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I mean, I enjoyed it. So I mean, we can just move on to Sandman yeah. now because this show, my God, this show, this show was great. This show was fucking amazing. Wait, loser, oh, have you seen it yet? I, I've only seen the first few episodes, so oh, I don't mind spoil. Listen, I don't mind spoil getting spoiled. I really don't. It's you not going to destroy me. You, I have no yeah. vestment into the Sandman franchise. I'm like, okay. I'm loving the show. So uh-huh. like, I have no vestment right. and I have not read the comic. So if I'm spoiled, I'm spoiled. Like, it's fine. I'm sure I will still enjoy the episodes. Yes, as they come. you are. Yeah. You, you are. Is This is this is a, a, this is probably, this is what perfect comic book adaptations should be. Yes. This, this Agreed. is literally the epitome of a one-to-one comic book adaptation granted there are some changes yeah and welc- welcome mm. welcome they to- just made a new fast meal edition uh i had to pick it up because i've never been able to collect one myself so the fast meal okay there you do. go now you got it and got dude, it. oh it, it look i could even just show you to you as simple as this first scene of the comic book that you of what you saw in the adaptation mm. mm-hmm. literally literally panel by panel and it's it like it's literally okay. this is the if this and wasn't is this the unadaptable lo, one of the unadaptable according according, according, to, according, according to, to hollywood yeah according yeah. to hollywood yeah you know so so back to boozer like there's nothing really that's what i think is the most beautiful thing about this this series and everything it's not that you're getting spoiled it's that you're you're because this is a series is not like you really can't spoil anything besides saying oh my god this is what they were really trying to do blah blah mm-hmm. blah but it's so story driven and so beautifully done that it's like you just need to experience it yourself regardless so regardless of what we say it's never going to do it justice to seeing the episode yeah, I, don't, I don't think yeah and this think is one of those shows that. where yeah you can get the word of, the word of mouth you can see the, the the good reviews and the critiques online. Mm-hmm. You can get some scenes and some moments spoiled, mm-hmm. but this it takes it to a completely different level when you're sit you're buckled in and you're going on that ride and you're seeing it all unfold. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I'm telling you, it was gripping. Like my, my girl's watching it and and she's not into the Sandman. Mm-hmm. She doesn't read it. She doesn't knows nothing about the Sandman, and and she watched the first episode. She was like, wait this i need to watch more and she was like every other yeah. thing we need to finish salmon finish salmon finish salmon i'm just like okay okay we'll we'll, we'll finish salmon we'll, we'll okay. get there we'll get there but but yeah this is the salmon is like i said this is what every comic book uh fan reader whatever the case may be would want in any comic book adaptation this is as close mm-hmm. as as perfect as as it gets and everything about it is is just stunning the cast was great the pacing of the story was great 10 episodes to me did not feel like enough by the end of it i was immediately after i was like no i need more like right now that you should have gave me 12 episodes 12 episodes ago that's how much that's how much i enjoyed sandman i mean visually it was just i'm surprised they were able to pull off a lot of the stuff they were able to pull off from a visual aspect alone because a lot of the Netflix stuff kind of looks a little wonky sometimes, like whenever yeah. they have stuff in live action. But you know, the perfect way they example, kind of off... like lock and key. There was some keys that they just couldn't do. One because obviously there's a lot of yeah, you know yeah. they could have been a lot of issues <laughs> using some certain keys. But right. at the same time, some keys they just didn't really mesh too well. They thankfully would, they got yeah. the shadow key well done, but that was that, you know we've seen those type of effects before. But yet yeah, back to like Sandman wise. Dude, like just seeing freaking um well they didn't call him Beelzebub. It, it was um you know the demon at the very end. Ah uh, oh, damn it. Um, it, there's a demon there, right? That's literally he is a strip of like faces, right? Just mouths and eyes, mm. and he's like in a tear of like space, mm. like like so like like it's. I didn't think they were gonna pull it off, but they pulled it off, and I'm just like that looks good. Like, I was like, holy shit, I'm really surprised they were able to pull this demon off. So I was just like, oh, the things like that. Great. Even yeah, even, it, even yeah. the depiction of hell as a whole. Oh, yeah. It was everything nice. from the gates, mm-hmm. everything. The, what, you know, all those souls Dude. that they had, bro, it was so, crazy. So, the, so my, one of my favorite scenes from like the comic and also the, like, so the audio book almost does it to perfection the, like because obviously neil gaiman is narrating it right. if you haven't listened to it on audible everyone including you boozer ozzy 
go listen to it because it's and also you can like get a 30 day free trial by using our affiliate link which is in the show notes please. and thanks the yes no there that's a segue so there's two of them right beautiful right <laughs> but with that right it's like there's the scene that they're 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 having the the battle as old as time right they're like this is like one of the first type of battles what is better right i don't know if you mm-hmm. got up to that episode uh boozer uh um, no, no i think no, i don't think that's, so. episode that's like three episode three or something no that's episode like six is it like, episode six? Like, nah. like five or six I feel like I want to say it's like three. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna double check right now. We'll so he hasn't got it. He hasn't went to go get his helmet yet, right? He's not in hell yet, right? That's all we need to know. Yeah. The last thing I saw was when he is when he says like we're going to hell with the bird. Okay, okay. Also, your next episode, you're gonna see it. So there's the scene there that they're having their uh, their their fight, and it's it's supposed it's just a visually stunning type of fight that you just don't expect to really work because it really is just kind of a battle of words and they just visually made it perfect because like on the audiobook when you're listening to it like they're they're doing comparisons like i'll give you the first round which is literally like i am a, a wolf and i will be coming to eat you type of thing so now you're trying to up the the ante right the next thing he says he's like okay then i am a, a knight on a horse with a spear and i will stab your wolf i'm a hunter type of thing right and they have to up each other mm. every single time so each time they're up it's, in a, the it's a literal battle of wits it, it, like, wits crazy. and just like what is life right like mm-hmm. as long as you're beat it's 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 prey versus predator if you can beat this person and then, and then i also like the, the undertone so of of that of that question like you just asked mm-hmm. what is life what is dreaming what is the afterlife and and the way they play with that listen neil game is just 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 writes these crazy mm-hmm. these crazy things and i think what has made the show so good is having him on as not just a writer but also a producer on the mm-hmm. show because a lot you know a lot of shows that and a lot of shows and a lot of movies that are that comic books for the most part you will not see the creator of these characters or the story anywhere near the project and that you know there's been a huge huge shift in hollywood yeah. and having these creators attached to the projects About that time. they created which is about time, obviously, because you're right. adapting their work. You know, you want to do justice to their work that they spent years, decades, decades, mm-hmm. maybe the, their entire lifetime creating and mastering, essentially. So that's that's just something I just got to appreciate and call out because that's not something we're starting to see mm-hmm. that shift in Hollywood, which is a step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And that's something I hope a lot of the bigger studios that yeah. do big blockbuster movies, you know, take note of that. Look how much better this can turn out mm-hmm. if we have the creator of the source material on board. So, you know, yeah. you'll see that. And, you know, I mentioned that also in my Surfside Girl interview with Kim Donnell, because she also worked on the on the Surfside Girls uh, TV show with Apple TV. Mm-hmm. Um, and she wrote the graphic novel. So, you know, they got feedback from her, what the, what ideas will work for her story that's being adapted and such like, and things like that. The same thing was done with Miss Marvel. You had the creator of Miss Marvel writing episodes, giving pointers, oh, she should be this. This is not Kamala Khan. This is definitely mm-hmm. Kamala Khan. Keep mm-hmm. this. I'm okay with these changes. Obviously the power set changes. That was something they consulted her with because she created the character of Kamala mm-hmm. Khan, Miss Marvel. So seeing that change in Hollywood, and I think that that betters the product by a thousand percent, as opposed to just some dude in a tie just sitting up there like, I never read this, but that don't that don't look good. I don't think yeah. that's gonna work. You know what I'm saying? See, we could even go back as far as uh, you know, when they first started adapting The Walking Dead like right. verbatim robert kirkman stayed on it for at least what definitely stayed on for at least the first five seasons i think you know like I mean? the first up to five, negan. Five seasons, i want to say yeah. i want to say to the introduction of negan that's how far i want to say robert kirkman really cared and he was like you know what you could do whatever you want here because i'm doing something different in the book mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know what i mean i think that's when he let them just take full reins that's in my theory right then of course Robert Kirkman with Invincible, Invincible. on Amazon Prime, right. you know that is beautiful. That like animated adaptation to the Invincible comics, awesome. And he had so much input on that s- section as well. Um, right now, Paper Girls is going in the right direction. You know, still another, very another different. Show where they brought in Brian, Brian K. Vaughn, right to tell him. Mm-hmm. that's you know what i mean so these are already proven stuff that are going in really well and you know what i mean it's because the creators are having input and 
Fun note, I don't know if you guys remember. And I was actually excited for this. I'm not going to lie because he's I'm a, like he's one of my favorite actors. Joseph Joseph Gordon-Levitt was supposed mm-hmm. to play a Sandman adaptation years ago. For the movie, right? For, the for movie a movie. Character? For a movie adaptation of the Sandman. And he was supposed to play, play Dream. And the funny thing is, is that I think it ended up getting scrapped because Neil Gaiman was not, not signing off on anything until he was given as much control as he as he wanted. Right. I did. I did read. I did read Netflix on that right here. Well. Yeah, he did. He did. He did essentially walk away from that project mm-hmm. because of conflicting ideas. Like there was stuff that he want. Essentially, he deemed like this is stuff that that you have to keep in this story in order to make it a proper adaptation. I mean, obviously, yeah. big studio executives they were essentially telling him to fuck off. Like, no. Yeah, yeah they were talking was... to Greg in finance. Yeah, they yeah. were talking, <laughs> definitely talking to Greg in finance because you know Greg knows everything. He knows and everything. He just oh, said, yeah. yeah, no. And then Netflix told him yes, and which is why we decades late, decades later. Is now that we're getting a live action adaptation of Sandman. We also got some bonus episodes coming for the Sandman as well. Do not don't remember when those are dropping. There's two bonus episodes, Fuck and I yes. believe one of one of them is animated. And I think they're adapting the, the cat dream, the, the cat, the cat, the, the cat story. Yes, I love that yeah, one. The that dream, I think really it's the dreams of a thousand cats or something like that. I think that's you know why? Oh, the other one I would love the the adaptation for is the um is a deaf episode uh, that um she she finds an art a struggling artist. And everything like yeah. that and um you know he's struggling but then it's a bunch of demons literally kind of like speaking like all this shit to him in his ear and all that kind of stuff and so he turns to drugs and all that kind of stuff to try to you know numb the pain and mm-hmm. eventually when it does take him death finds him and it's just beautiful oh incredible fucking story incredible speaking story. of death she was great in that one episode that was dedicated to, to just her yes oh yes. my god I, well, that, 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 I think i think we mentioned it, those it was were, that episode it was the death and episode. the diner it's 24 7 24 7 yeah bro 24, that 7 episode, and the death episode perfect that episode was so intense i'm pretty yeah. boozer hasn't gotten to that one yet mm. but once you get to that 24 7 episode Dude, that one i believe is episode seven it's it's uh, it's a it's a crazy cringe you're gonna get you're gonna get a cringe off that episode so i don't i don't have much to speak from just because i only watched i think the first three episodes Mm -hmm. but from some of the things that were like highlights to me was of course the dialogue was just Mm -hmm. just fantastic Mm -hmm. um and like uh, i also uh, the voice of sandman was fantastic as well they he he was he's been fantastic one thing i liked is when um old man jenkins was uh, asking for like give me something you know since he doesn't have death he's like mm-hmm, right. i'll let you go just you know give me immortality or, or whatever it may be and i like that he was like these are not my gifts to give mm-hmm. you know what i mean like that's it's not these are not my things right. to give to you mm-hmm. um but yeah i just um that i really enjoyed that the visuals were really amazing i like when he went to uh see uh what was it the three the hecate oh uh, the, the hecate yeah, the, the, yeah three, the, the three, the, 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 the three, sisters, the sisters, the sisters, sisters, the fates. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Um, the visuals of him going into the water and going through the dreams and grabbing the snake and the crossroads that was pretty, pretty trippy oh, yeah. and pretty wild. Beautiful. Um, and and now that I like, like, I, I did not put two and two together only because, like I said, I, I just don't have the source material, but mm-hmm. like, I didn't realize it was the same person that did American Gods. Yeah. And oh, American yeah. Gods was also fantastic and visually impressive as well with like mm-hmm. the concepts that they did and everything. So it make makes sense now. Um mm-hmm. and yeah, I just I enjoyed, you know, the characters interacting. I think everyone really played their roles extremely well in, in the little bit that I've seen so far. Um I've never been so sad about uh two fictional animals in my entire life. You know the the gargoyle and a bird, uh, the gargoyle and the very yeah, Jesse and the raven. I yeah. barely knew them, and I I care for I care dearly for them. I don't Bro, know. How I was show... rooting. I was rooting for Jesse. I was, I was like, rooting. Jessamy, get come on, I was like, Jessamy, get crack get get him out, get him out, Jesse. I right, listen. You know Bro, the one that was painful. The one good thing is at least it. the son actually showed it respect, and he took it out to bury it. Yeah, and, and he at the end of the, the day, he, he was tried. a victim. He you tried. know, he was a victim. Yeah. He, he at, was at the end a of victim. Day, I felt for to, him. But to yeah. his, his father was mm-hmm. clearly an abusive piece of shit. Oh yeah, ridiculous. Uh, yeah, you know, so I definitely like as as sad as I was, but like, you know, and at the end of the day, he he got his because he mean at the end of the day he could have let him go, but he was so scared of being killed, retribution. 
uh, he just couldn't he couldn't do it right and you know he but he, he did get to live a long full yeah. life so oh yeah he but, did. He still did his life. yeah so but, but at yeah, what like, cost <laughs> but, but at yeah, what no, cost yeah. um, i know now he's living the eternal nightmare at the very end of it yeah which mm. which again they slightly changed from the book but you know they just made it i guess mm. they just adapted it which is like it still works it's still kind of a similar theme mm-hmm. to it but like in the comic it's just it's an internal he's living an eternal nightmare yeah every single time every single time it just gets worse and worse and mm. worse compared to just living in that one dream over yeah. and over again which yeah. i think the eternal nightmare is just like even more crazier yeah. Because oh yeah i, I think, I think sure. that's worse than, than, yeah. than actually dying i mean oh absolutely <laughs> yeah. 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 worse than actually dying um and, and oh being, one being other judge for having it having a hell and shit constantine also love love oh, Joanna Joanna oh she was oh, oh yeah she God. is already in the episode too that's right yeah, yeah. because mm-hmm. yeah, I forget yeah. that but they had to get the, the sand. bag of sand they yeah. get the bag of sand and you'll you'll, you'll get the nice fight that we were talking about between Lucifer and um and Dream the next episode mm-hmm. it's episode yeah. four yeah so mm-hmm. that's that's gonna be a visual yeah. treat um yo every everything about this show was just like so good I have my it just sucks you in it just it yeah, really, it really does, does like it, I don't it, think it, I have anything. I've, I've never been so focused it. on a show, like just like watching it deeply. You know what I mean? Like so yeah, laser, been, been, been like while, my phone just like, could yeah, be ringing and I really don't care. Yeah, I have a ton of vision for the show. I'm like, I don't, don't talk to me. Don't pause it. No bathroom breaks. No, don't. If you're going to grab snacks, grab, grab oh, no, the no. snacks before the show starts. We're not getting, uh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. See, now. now it's like we pause it. Okay, cool. Let's get our shit done. Okay. Rewind it two minutes. So it we flow two, back into two it minutes? naturally. I'm, no, I'm going, at least I'm two going minutes. back five. Two <laughs> okay, excuse you. Five. Oh, excuse <laughs> you. <laughs> restart the episode, please. We pause. Restart the episode. We're watching, and then get well, back in the same place again. That's why I was like, two minutes. We should be good. But the, yeah. which is fun too, by the way. The the Joanna Constantine is actually just John Constantine in the fir- the first time he sees him yeah. in the comics, which is I still think is fine, and I love. And you'll see a bruiser later on. I love the well, reason do you, why. Do you know why why they couldn't put John? Constantine in the oh, show. it's the money and rights issues and everything yeah, like with the DC yeah, and stuff. Yeah. That's, oh, it's yeah, that's, 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 that's the why... only stupid reason. But yeah, it's like, and on. then we'll we'll find out why they don't mention Arkham Asylum and they don't mention other shit because of the same reason they can't. Because yeah, at the yeah, end of the day, remember. Sandman is, is DC is in the it's, DC. It's, it's yeah, in DC they're DC. they're intertwined. Yeah, see, and which is loved, which is great. There was there was a nice nod to the whole comic book thing from Death in the Death episode. Yes, she was like, oh, I've seen. She's at the start of the, the the entire universe, multiverse, or whatever. She's like, I've seen the very first thing. I was around when the very first living thing came to be, and then I'll be there at the very end to just lock the door and throw away the key. And it go and just brought me back to the panel in the comic book where she's literally at the end of the universe, like mm-hmm. closing that door with the key. I'm just like, you motherfuckers. I would like to see that adapted, but I don't think we're ever gonna get that despite how many ever seasons we're going to get here. But if we ever do get that scene, yeah. that's like, that has to be like, that's how you close off this story. Death at the end with, with the key, just closing the door to, to the entirety of, of the universe. But yeah, it, it's such a, it's such a good show. Boozer, you are definitely in for a treat to say the least. There's more, there's more spectacle mm-hmm. to come later on. These these first three episodes are just the tip of the iceberg. And trust, you're mm-hmm. gonna wanna you're gonna really want to be more laser focused than you were. Yeah. And it should, more than you already are, to be completely honest. Yeah. And honestly, if you want to even bring it back to the comic book wise, it's literally just book one they pretty much adapted. They haven't even there's so much content that they're going to be able to adapt into the series. They can do a lot of. A oh lot my of seasons. god! Think about it. How right many now, books are there? Oh, okay, so it depends how you do it, right? So there's three omnibuses, right? I want to say with one is called the Dollhouse, one is a House of Mystery, and then one I think the House of Secrets too as well. But I might be wrong there because it's been a long time since I've checked around. But I know Dollhouse is one of the major first arcs and everything like that, that pretty much contain everything that we already seen. Um, and, you know, it's just so much great shit. Like, it, like but I, it, it's a long read. I can tell you like that. It's huge. It's still very huge because there's a lot of details that are missing, obviously. But, you mm-hmm. know, it's 
you can find it pretty easily so you know what i mean yeah. i can tell you that much i'm hoping they even at some point adapt some of the newer stuff that's got like ongoing right now like the nightmare country and, and stuff oh like yeah that. like uh I'm hoping that they, they kind of do at some point adapt some of that material because it looks the thing was with me like i haven't read much sandman to be completely honest so like oh, most yeah. of my knowledge is just like watching a lot of like reference videos or even the comparison stuff what was in the comic what was in the show Mm -hmm. Um, i've only probably read like maybe one or two issues maybe three pushing it to be be completely honest yeah of course like remember it dude it was already out by the time we were born (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) it's way before our time it it, it wasn't it wasn't something for us right away you know what i mean we didn't know that think about it it was even still m for mature by the time we got to it you know what i mean we were we were still like getting to our shit right i mean it was still it was still vertigo at the time oh yeah exactly how we got to it it was still vertigo oh yeah i i just read the john constantine vertigo stuff like that's how long is like i because i was like you know what i love john constantine i've always been into it but i'm like i never read his original and i just read them not yeah. too long ago and they're fucking sick i love them I, they're so yeah. fucking cool. I, I i i enjoyed i really really enjoyed the same man this is something i may eventually go back and rewatch just just for mm-hmm. the visual same. piece that it is oh the my lady wants straight. to watch it again too she already said it multiple times she was like i want to watch same man again i'm like then fuck, let's do it i'm fine let's do it, <laughs> let's, let's do it. it's right uh, there it's cool. <laughs> it's like, why are we waiting nobody's stopping us but us <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna already, I'm gonna notify certify this episode. I know we didn't give no ratings for anything. We haven't really given a rating to. I think the last time we gave a rating was for uh, Thor Ragnarok or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. Why did I say Ragnarok? Uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. It was just um, as bad. That's why. And Ms. Marvel. I think we also gave a rating from Ms. Marvel. <laughs> but well, yeah, you also gave five. a you gave a rating for She Hulk so far for the first one through four, yeah. technically, right? The, yeah. The, 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 so I did I'll believe you. Media. I gave it three stars. Um, yeah, there's it. some good stuff in there. Trust. I think people is She Hulk is not going to be for everybody, and there's going to be people critiquing it just mm-hmm. to critique it. To be honest, you know, you know how the trend goes when it's it comes the to the female, the, the female led show. You know? <laughs> so, but yeah, um, that's pretty much for us this this episode and this week. Um, Boozer and I will be back full force again with the anime in the basement pod. We've been missing for like a month, and that's because I. I've been backed up with so much stuff. I'm so backed up on anime and manga. I have a lot of catching up to do, but we'll be back with a nice episode for you guys. We missed uh, Crunchyroll Expo, so there's a lot of announcements that came out of that that we missed that we didn't really cover. Um, but yeah, we'll be back with a new episode with that. Uh, we got a whole bunch of videos on our YouTube channel. We got uh, like maybe like three, four new interviews that dropped this week alone. Just this week, yeah. yeah. Just this mm-hmm. week. We have mm-hmm. another one dropping on the 19th, which is this coming Friday. By the time you guys listen to this episode, everything will be out on the YouTube channel. But And we got more coming in the following week. So there's a lot of interviews coming. There's a lot more content coming to the YouTube channel. So make sure you guys subscribe. We're about four or five subscribers away from 300. So that was just mm-hmm. a week ago that we told you guys to help us get to 300. Get and we're almost there. So we really enjoy and appreciate yeah. All the support we've been getting for all the content we're pushing mm-hmm. out all to social media. For those who follow us on Instagram and only on Instagram and Twitter, I apologize for not being super active. <laughs> Life has been hectic since I came back from vacation, but you guys are seeing it all coming to fruition on, on all the other Word. social social channels. But, but Boozer, we'll you follow us, right? Pretty soon. You subscribed? Boozer. You better have subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> you and your fiance better subscribe because you could have been everybody. Get already. the dog, <laughs> get the make the dog a YouTube channel and have him subscribe. Even and just give him a little mini uh, tablet and just have them watch the this YouTube link videos. It. Just, That's it. Just That's let it, it play. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you guys can keep up the, with the Nerdy Basement literally everywhere at this point. I don't need to mention it, but Comics in the Basement is also everywhere. Anime in the Basement is also everywhere. Boozer, if you want to plug yourself in, feel free to do so. But I'm, I'm done for this episode. Me, personally, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter. I'm pretty active. Very active. A little too active. Very, very. Uh, at Last Line <laughs> Show. <too> <laughs> uh, and uh, I have a YouTube account that I'll post one day. At last line show, one day, one day, love it. One day, but yeah, <laughs> short and sweet to the point. But with that being said, that'll be for us this week. As always, we'll see you guys on the next one. Mm-hmm. And stay nerdy, my friends. Peace.